Today's topic, the study of the mind. We are going to look at the last part of chapter 1, which is the importance of the study of the mind. What we are going to cover is the duty of every Christian to develop mind, to train every power of mind and body, the cultivated mind measures the men, acquiring knowledge and mental culture, understanding minds of great value in dealing with the sick, understanding minds and human nature aids in the work of salvation, cultivated powers increase demand for our services. We may attain almost the excellence of angels as the last. Let's begin. The duty of every Christian to develop mind. It is the duty of every Christian to acquire habit of order, thoroughness, and dispatch. There is no excuse for slow bungling at work of any character. When one is always at work and the work is never done, it is because mind and heart are not put into the labor. The one who is slow and who works at a disadvantage should realize that these are faults to be corrected. He needs to exercise his mind in planning how to use the time so as to secure the best results. By tact and method, some will accomplish as much in five hours as others do in ten. Some who are engaged in domestic labor are always at work, not because they have so much to do, but because they do not plan so as to save time. By their slow, dilatory ways, they make much work out of very little. But all who will may overcome these fussy, lingering habits. In their work, let them have a definite aim. Decide how long a time is required for a given task, and then bend every effort toward accomplishing the work in the given time. The exercise of the willpower will make the hands move deftly. This is from Christ Object Lesson, page 344. Interestingly, um, most of us already know that part of the spectrum. If you've been to school, you can you can see if you if you work, let's say for five hours and you go to class and all that, then at the end of the day, you don't have that much time to do your homework. Your brain is concentrated more on the task, whereas if you were just going to school and going and going to do your homework and have a lot of free time, then you start wandering around and then oh yeah, I would say your mind starts wandering around and then you find yourself uh, not doing as much as you would have to and I was reading this book called uh, Personality Theories, Development, Growth, and Diversity. And um, so far, these that the messenger here has written is exactly what they are talking about. Um, especially not in that, not in the, the not that part, but in the habit part. Yes, they also talk about um, putting order in the in the life but it is interesting that and as i'm getting deeper into it i will start quoting those ver- um, those places in that book and sometimes the reason why do not get the task done they also mention there are some 
factors that may happen. For instance, on page 7, it talks about the correlation. He says that psychological investigations have shown that as noise levels go up, performance on various cognitive tasks, such as reading, arithmetic, problem solving, goes down. Why does that happen? People that are not used to, to having noise around them while they are doing something, they cannot concentrate. The same way, people that, as she's mentioning here, people that, basically what she's saying here is that people that have a lot of time in front of them, they're not used to that. They, they, and they don't, they don't make, they're not used to making a habit of order. Maybe because their parents always tell them at a certain time to do it, but they never practice it themselves. Then the time when they have to be by themselves, they are lacking that habit of order because they've never developed it themselves. In a sense, it is a negative correlation because the more habit of order you have, the less time you spend in, a, in an assignment, but in the less and the less habit of order you have, the more time you waste on an assignment. Basically, that's her point right here. Second part, to train every power of mind and body. God has given to every human being a brain. He desires that it shall be used to his glory. We have none too much brain power or reasoning faculties. We are to educate and train every power of mind and body in order that we may put it to the best possible use, meaning the human mechanism that Christ has bought. We are to do all we can to strengthen these powers, for God is pleased to have us become more and still more efficient collaborators with Him. That's from Selected Messages, Book 1, page 100. And yes, Remember that this is for the Christian primarily. And so as Christian, the the habit that we develop is primarily to use it for the service of Christ, to bring people to Him. And we need to cultivate those habits that we just talked about, habits of order. The third part, which is the cultivated mind measures the man. Never think that you have learned enough and that you may now relax your efforts. The cultivated mind is the measure of the man. Your education should continue during your lifetime. Every day you should be learning and putting to practical use the knowledge gain. Ministry of Healing, page 499. The similarity between an uncultivated field and an untrained mind is striking. Children and youth already have in their, in their minds and hearts corrupt seeds ready to spring up and bear its perverting harvest, and the greatest care and watchfulness are needed in cultivating and storing the mind with precious seeds of Bible truth. And this is from Review and Herald, November 9, 1886. So this thing was written in 1886. And now, apparently, as psychologists are doing research, they are getting right back to what she said. So far, what she's been saying, or at least I, mean, we, I know what she's been saying is true, but like I read earlier from that book, it's a, it's a scientific book that they basically just agrees. It agrees with what we just read in the Messenger's book. And so, yes, uh, the, the cultivated mind, there is a, a, a saying and it goes as follows. It says, uh, tell me who your friends are and I will tell you who you are. But I will say it's better to say, tell me how you think and I'll tell you who your friends are.
and who you are. So the 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 psalmist said it in a better way. The preacher Solomon said it in a better way. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So what is in your mind determines what kind of person you are. And of course, science already backed that up. Uh, so it's not just about religious principles right here, but to make sure that you know that what the Bible says and what the spirit of prophecy actually says, we are using science to back it up. And of course, if you study for yourself, you will see the same result. Next part, acquiring knowledge and mental culture. Upon the right improvement of our time depends our success in acquiring knowledge and mental culture. The cultivation of the intellect need not be prevented by poverty, humble origin, or unfavorable surroundings. A resolute purpose, persistent industry, and careful economy of time will enable men to acquire knowledge and mental discipline which will qualify them for almost any position of influence and usefulness. Christ's Object Lesson, page 343 and 344. And yes, you have to understand that people that put their minds on the task, they achieve a lot more. They have a clear path. They have a clear path of where they want to go, what they want to do, and how they want to do it. And so, we need to have that same mindset. Now, this is written for everybody, not just for the Christian. We don't advocate for only Christians to have that kind of mindset. We would like everyone to have that kind of mindset because if we do as a nation, we will succeed as long as we use it the right way or for the right purpose. Let's move on to the next part. Understanding minds of great value in dealing with the sick. Great wisdom is needed in dealing with diseases caused through the mind. A sore, sick heart, a discouraged mind, needs maltreatment. Sympathy and tact will often prove a greater benefit to the sick than will the most skillful treatment given in a cold and different way. Ministry of Healing, page 244. Have you ever been to a hospital or a clinic? or something like this because we're sick. I can guarantee you, if you don't receive a treatment with the care that is supposed to come with, you will not get out any better. The reason is because when you come to the hospital, first, your brain is not stable, and you want somebody to help you get there, uh, I would say, mentally first. Now, if you get a doctor or a nurse who is mean, that will not help the process. It will hinder the process. Even if they give you all the medication that you need, it will hinder the process because mentally, you are not getting better. You are not elevating yourself. Actually, because the person is there and is, and is being cold with you about your disease, it brings you even down more it brings more bad than good even with the medication and so yes this is a uh, is something very important especially for doctors and nurses and people in that category they need to think about how they treat their patients the next part understanding minds and human nature aids in the work of salvation be determined to become as useful and efficient as God calls you to be. Be thorough and faithful in whatever you undertake. Procure every advantage within your reach of strengthening the intellect. 
let the study of books be combined with useful manual labor, and by faithful endeavor, watchfulness, and prayer, secure the wisdom that is from above. This will give you an all-round education. Thus you may rise in character and gain an influence over other minds, enabling you to lead them in the path of righteousness and holiness. Christ Object Lesson, page 334 Mechanics, lawyers, merchants, men of all trades and professions educate themselves that they may become masters of their business. Should the followers of Christ be less intelligent and while professedly engaged in his service be ignorant of the ways and means to be employed? The enterprise of gaining everlasting life is above every earthly consideration. In order to lead souls to Jesus, there must be a knowledge of human nature and a study of the human mind. Much careful thought and fervent prayer are required to know how to approach men and women upon the great subject of truth. Testimony Volume 4 page 67. So basically, the same way you, you spend time to study and practice and uh, practice and practice for your profession, we should know that the work that we have to do for God is a profession as well. And it's a profession above any professions that you may have because there is nothing higher than leading somebody to Christ. Because it's a matter of either you're going to die or you'll be dead eternally or you will live eternally. Now, it's not about um, dying eternally. People don't die eternally. Now, people are not dying eternally. Let me say that way. People are not dying eternally. People will die and cease to exist eternally. Just as when you die, you go to the grave. It's the same way when Christ comes the second time, some will live with him forever, and some will cease to exist forever. They are not dying eternally. The next one, I'm going to look at the last two together. Cultivated powers increase demand for our service. Through lack of determination to take themselves in hand and reform, persons can become stereotyped in a wrong course of action, or by cultivating their powers, they may acquire ability to do the very best of service. Then they will find themselves in demand anywhere and everywhere. They will be appreciated for all that they are worth. Christ Object Lesson, page 344. We may attain almost the excellence of angels. The Lord has given man capacity for continual improvement and has granted him all possible aid in the work. Through the provisions of divine grace, we may attain almost to the excellence of the angel. Review and Herald. June 20, 1882. So this is the the chapter of called Importance of the Study of the Mind. And so far, what we've been looking at is basically how the mind operates. Uh, we we spend time, we we make time for things, we try to have habits of order or good habits and uh, if you have a bad habit it's a, it's a fault that you have cultivated because that would not be a, a very good thing in the future for you and you can see people who actually do not try to make habits of order they have a disordered life and I don't think anybody wants to to have that kind of life but 
some because they've made it a habit and you know your habit is later on it becomes your character so that's why we are studying this topic today which is mind character and personality so this is that's it for today uh, and thank you for listening i will see you again the next time until then bye for now love you out